Welcome to our lecture online. Before we use the concept of entropy in the calculation of the thermodynamic potentials, especially when we talk about Gibbs free energy and Helmholtz free energy, we need to understand what entropy actually is. So we have a couple of definitions for entropy. There's more than a couple, but these two probably do a pretty good job in defining the concept of entropy. First of all, entropy is defined as a measure of the amount of disorder or randomness of a system. So systems tend to go from an ordered state to a disordered state. So they tend to go more and more towards a disorder, which means that entropy will increase. Increased disorder means increased entropy. Increased order means entropy goes down, which is not normally a natural process. All processes, all systems, tend to go from an ordered state to a disordered state. The second definition, entropy, can be defined as a measure of the thermodynamic equilibrium. The more a system is at equilibrium, the higher the entropy. What does that mean? Well, we talk about thermodynamic equilibrium, which means when systems will tend to go from a variation in temperature to a non-variation in temperature. In other words, from temperature differences to temperatures being the same because whenever there's a temperature difference, that will cause a heat to flow from where it's hot to where it's cold until the temperature ends up being the same. So from a temperature difference, that means low entropy, we go to a state of where temperature is being the same, and that means high entropy. Notice that all systems tend to go from low entropy to high entropy, from a ordered state to a disordered state, or from temperature differences to temperatures being the same. That's the general principle of entropy. A couple of examples. Let's say we throw 10 coins at random. The chance of them all ending up with the same side up, all heads up for example, is very very low because that is a high order state, therefore a low entropy state. When we toss 10 coins, the chances are that about 5 will be heads up, 5 will be heads down, and that's considered a low entropy state. So naturally things tend to go from an ordered to a disordered state. This is a highly ordered state, and when we randomly toss coins around, they will tend to go to a low ordered state, therefore a high entropy state. Here, let's say we have two reservoirs, one where it's hot, one where it's cold. If they're connected with a conducting path, a heat conducting path, heat will travel from where it's hot to where it's cold. There's a temperature difference. A temperature difference means a low entropy state. Then naturally heat will flow across until the two reservoirs are at the same temperature, which means a high entropy state because now there's no longer a differentiation in the temperature. So high entropy means no heat flow, same temperature. So notice that every time heat is exchanged, entropy goes up. The availability of heat declines and that's the condition of entropy. Entropy is an indication that as heat is being exchanged, Entropy goes up because that means that systems tend towards the same temperature, which means that systems tend to go to the position or the condition where no longer there can be any heat exchange. And that's the increase in entropy. And all systems naturally will follow this trend, will go from a low entropy state to a high entropy state. And so since we're dealing a lot with heat flow, heat, internal energy, and so forth, entropy is therefore an integral, an integral part of the condition of the thermodynamic potentials. And so we'll try, we'll try to link entropy now with how to calculate those thermodynamic principles and thermodynamic potentials. And that's how it's done. 